Hello everyone and welcome to our Object Matrix Avato webinar uh, where we're going to be looking at the powerful Production Asset Manager VPMS EditMate along with the secure media focused Object Storage Matrix Store. Um, here today is myself, Mark Haberfield and also Karsten from Avato. Hello everyone. And also we have Nick here from Object Matrix as well. Hi guys. So we're just going to do a quick company overview, quick look at who Object Matrix are and Avato are, um, a look at our main products that we're going to be showing today, uh, along with a quick look at the workflow and the demonstration. Um, and then we'll have a quick Q&A at the end as well, just if you guys have got any questions uh, to go along with it. So without further ado, I'll hand over to Nick, who can tell us all about Object Matrix. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Nick Pierce, uh, co-founder of Object Matrix responsible for sales and marketing. Um, so Object Matrix, we're a software company from sunny South Wales, and we've been pioneering object storage since about 2003. Uh, before that, we helped to build the world's first uh, commercial object storage platform, a platform called Centera. And in 2003, we broke out and decided to, to build our own platform that we call Matrix Store. So whilst protecting content is our business we've got a real passion for working in media and in fact we only focus on media workflows so whilst other vendors maybe try to get you to shape your workflows around their technology we've spent the last certainly 10 years in media shaping our technology to your workflows and your challenges we have a, a time map of the company's history um, we've been around uh, 16 years, almost 17 years now, and as pioneers, we were pretty much early to market. Uh, we launched the first storage as a service platform in the Netherlands in 2005. Um, we for sure put the first object storage into a creative workflow anywhere in the world in 2006. Then we went through a, a bit of a trough of... Uh, despair as um, any startup company does where you sort of taking pioneering innovative products to, to a mature market. So in 2008 and 9, not only did we build uh, MXFS, which is a file to object file system that runs on Windows, Mac and Linux, uh, comes free with a solution, but we also made the decision to only work in media workflows. Uh, and since then, We've built up a, an impressive array of customers in posts, sports, news, ad agencies, uh, and re more recently, uh, visual effects. So there aren't many companies with a heritage in object storage like ours, and certainly there are no companies working in object storage that are, have the, the media experience, expertise, and support we have. So basically, we've become more of a strategic partner for our customers. We understand your industry. We aim to enable your teams to um, collaborate globally, whilst hopefully increasing operational efficiency and empowering creativity. Now, that's a bold statement, but in reality, if we can stop your staff managing media and doing the laborious data-driven tasks so that they can get on with things that actually benefit your business, then I think that's a great thing. So we have the obligatory customer slide. Uh, not all of our customers are on this slide because there are a number of major um, organizations that we're not allowed to uh, share their logo. Um, but as you can see, they're mostly in the creative space uh, across the UK, Europe, Latin America, the US, and more recently, New Zealand. There are some banks and more corporate businesses on there, but again, they're all video or media workflows. We all face the same challenges of ingesting, protecting, tagging, logging, sharing, and distributing content and archiving content. Great, thanks for that, Nick. So um, we'll hand you over to Carsten now. Tell us a little bit more about Avato. Yeah, thanks, Mark. So my name is um, Carsten. I'm working in the product management um, team responsible for VPMS. So um, as you can see on the logo, Avato is part of um, Bertelsmann and Bertelsmann consists of eight different um, divisions providing different fields um, of the industry. And um, yeah, like um, RTL Group, uh, Penguin Random House and et cetera. 
Um, the largest division in terms of uh, personnel is the service provider Avato. Um, you see the figures on the next slide. So Avato deals um, with the main topics of uh, supply chain management, finance and IT and has around over 70,000 employees um, worldwide. Um, next slide, please. Um, so as I said, Avato, Avato is um, serving different um, fields and these fields are divided into four um, solution groups, which is uh, first of all financial solutions, which is a global uh, financial service provider to integrate solutions along the entire order to cash chain. Avato um, supply chain management offers order to cash solutions for end customer oriented businesses. Um, the Avato Majorelle is the rebranding of the former Avato CRM um, solutions. And the Avato Systems is the international IT specialist that supports other companies um, in digital transformation. Next slide, please. Yeah, with more than 2,700 um, employees, Avato is represented in over 25 locations on three continents. Um, worldwide. In Germany, the headquarter is uh, Gütersloh, and in the US, we have an office um, in New York, and lots of our um, development resources um, sit in Kuala Lumpur. The um, department that I'm working for, um, the media asset management, um, is based in Cologne. Yeah, um, like I said, um, Avato is um, concentrating on the operation and support of IT systems. Um, and we concentrate on the industries, um, commerce, media, and utilities. Uh, when it comes to commerce, we support large national and international trading companies. Um, for utilities, um, our customers are in the energy, water, and waste management field. And yeah, for, for media, our solutions um, support, support the core process of um, yeah, media companies such as newspaper, book publishers, the music industry, um, or TV channels. On the next slide, you see our individual um, solutions for the media industry. Um, from a business perspective, we offer solution also for content monetization and program and rights management. Um, but the um, suite that I'm responsible for and where VPMS Edit made is a part this is um, the media asset management um, system. You see the details on the next slide. So our VPMS, which stands for Video Production Management Suite, consists of several individual products. And it, um, yeah, it's um, based on a completely modern technology stack, stack with an open API and plugin concept. So all these products can be um, can be placed together, can be work can work together, and are connected via an open API, so that other um, third-party vendors or customers and partners can also um, connect to this um, suite. Everything is configured in a yeah user-focused configuration portal, and especially for EditMate, we offer our unique streaming um, technology to enable enterprise wide distributed remote workflows. On the next slide, um, you see the suite in a bit more detail. So we cover the entire workflow chain from ingest um, to playout. So when we start with ingest, we have VPMS origin, our ingest solution, hand over the assets then for search and browse functionalities over different content silos in media portal. Uh, we also have a um, light, fast, and flexible browser editing solution, which is the media editor. And today we want to focus um, on EditMate, which is the solution for collaborative editing and project management. The workflow is round up by ClipJockey, our professional tool for studio production. Next slide, please. Yeah, this is also our um, customer base. So as a German um, company, we started um, with the public broadcasting stations um, here in Germany. But within the last years, we extended our business uh, throughout Europe um, towards the North America market, where we at the moment have some good, good success um, in the US, um, but also in Canada. Yeah, that's a brief overview about um, Avato as a company. And now I would like to hand over back to Mark. Thanks very much. So uh, we'll get Nick here to give us a quick overview of the, the Matrix Store product itself. 
being a sales guy, I'm, I'm the best person to give you a technology overview. Um, so Matrix Store uh, is an object storage platform. And we built it to be very much optimized for video workflows since we started focusing only on media the last 10 years. Um, and it's integrated into your workflows. We've done a lot of effort with fantastic partners like Avato Systems uh, to ensure that we do the integration and testing work so that you guys just get a, a fantastic experience. And as you'll see in the slides, I hope, and throughout the product uh, demonstrations, Matrix Store is more than just a bit bucket uh, or file system, or sort of just a file system. In terms of the, off what does it offer? Well, it offers many things. It's not just about performance and scale or an S3 interface, as many of our um, competitors will, would like to talk about. We've, um, we talk about digital content governance. How safe is my data? Who's had access to it? Can I get full audits uh, and search for audits through an API? Is it multi-tenancy and can I have disaster recovery built in? Um, all these things are, are super important when it comes to security of content, whether you're a new sports broadcaster, ad agency, um, and the ability to keep working in, in the event of local outages uh, is super important. And many people put that off until the last minute or until there is an outage. Uh, and then, of course, it's a rush to get these things implemented. Metadata is super important. Um, up until recently, people have been backing up their databases, but really, if the database becomes disjointed from the storage, you'll, you'll struggle to find your content. So it's very important to be able to protect your metadata in an object storage platform, as well as your data. Um, some of that can be passed through with an API. Uh, we offer tools that enable you to add metadata, but we also have this fantastic functionality um, built into Matrix Store, the storage itself, to process data where it lives. So instead of moving data to process it, we can do it in situ. And the first thing we've done with that is extract metadata from known formats. So if you put an IMF, an AS11, XMP, anything with media info or EXIF information, the matrix store nodes will extract the metadata from the headers, index it and make it searchable, making your content and your metadata future-proof. Uh, we've also this year launched Sense, our powerful analytics tool that gives you an idea of what data is hot, who's using the system, etc. In terms of access, we support all of the known protocols you'd expect. We have a um, fantastic API. We, we support the S3 protocol. Uh, we're as S3-ish as the next person. Um, and also we have this MXFS file system, which if ever you've worked in Avid workflows, it's a bit like the Avid Connection Manager local, very fast access to your content from your Mac, Windows, or Linux uh, PC, laptop, or server. And more importantly, you don't want to buy, um, you know, a 100K doorstop that's not going to scale or grow in your workflows. But we've uh, supplied that in terms of the system is fully scalable in workflow, capacity, uh, and in terms of ensuring that your data and metadata are protected. Your data belongs to you, including your metadata. So it's important that you have full access to that, whether it's in our system or any third-party storage that we move it to. Um, many organizations, if they're moving content to an S3 platform, they'll tie that data up in their format so you don't have access to it unless you bring it back to their system. We've never believed in that. It's one of our original three maxims, the data belongs to you, not us. So that future-proof message is really important. So a bit of a spidery uh, diagram, this one, but it shows the applications that we've built um, in order to satisfy the demands our customers have made. As mentioned, when we started, we were six storage geeks who built a product we wanted to build for the first number of years um, and sold um, next to nothing. And then when we started listening to customers and defining our roadmap via that customer feedback, we started to become a lot more successful. So we built Interconnect, the Interplay PAM plugin for the BBC. And now that's used globally by broadcasters and news organizations. Uh, we've had our own API since 2003, since we started. And, and all of our applications, whether it's Samba, NFS, um, S3, they all use that API under the hood, which means it's future-proof. If you use S3 to write to Matrix Store, you can read it with any other of our protocols. And again, that's something to look out for. 
top right we have Dropspot. Dropspot is a application that's uh, uh, a GUI, uh, runs on Windows, Mac, and Linux for moving data from other storage platforms and adding metadata. And BBC has used that for Strictly Come Dancing for the last six years. Vision is our interface that Mark will show you today, a uh, web-based browser for looking at your archive content. So it's by no, no means a MAM uh, in any way, but if you need a second way of looking at your data, should your primary uh, view be down, or the brain that's holding all your metadata is, is offline for some reason, then Vision is a fantastic tool for, for uh, browsing, sharing, and tagging that content. MXFS we've spoken about, S3 Connect is the S3 interface that we've uh, built. And lastly, Move to S3. Move to S3 enables us to provide hybrid workflows where you can have matrix or on-prem and then send content to any S3 enabled platform, uh, be that other storage or public cloud. In terms of deployment, uh, up until 2019, the vast majority of our customers were on-prem. Um, and that on-prem being uh, either within one building or spread across the estate in different geographies, but very much in our customers' data centers. Uh, more recently, in the last two years, we've been offering Matrix Store as a service, which is a managed service where we um, host your data and applications, and you pay more of an Amazon-like fee, but the great thing is, is you know where your data is, there's uh, no sovereignty issues, um, we haven't ransomed your data, and you can uh, access that content whenever you want with no additional cost. And of course, if you need to use public cloud fabrics, then we've integrated with those as well. So we have customers who are keeping uh, a cache of content on-prem, pushing content up into public cloud, and then also keeping proxies of all of their content that's in the Amazon archive on-prem so they can browse it, play it, share it, clip it, and then make a really well-defined commercial decision as to when to bring that content back from those platforms, which gives much more predictability of cost. And, and talking about that predictably of cost, um, these days you can't just rock up and buy two or 300 terabytes of a storage platform. Um, the, the days of the engineer making that sole decision with a the budget they've been given are pretty much gone. Um, these days there are way more stakeholders need to be accounted for. So the end user, this new storage platform has to be totally non-disruptive uh, and integrated into way, the way they work, which is why We've done all the great work to do the integration with Avato and EditMate and all the other applications. Content needs to be easy to found and interfaces need to be completely intuitive. In terms of the C-level guys, they want to make sure that there's a good ROI, that there's, they're going to be seeing some um, operational efficiencies, maybe the ability to generate more revenue, um, certainly more flexibility when it comes to using operational budgets or capex and managed services uh, and, and again providing predictability of cost so having fixed uh, framework agreements for five or ten years where you know how much storage is going to cost you and how much your operational costs are going to be we really help teams to focus on value generation and not data management and that's really key within a business because if someone's managing moving tapes around or finding data from disparate silos of storage, they're not getting on with a job that generates value for the organization. And hopefully if they're doing things that are good for the organization, more content's being created and your communities are getting much more engaged with the content you're, you're creating and hopefully that uh, will affect the top line re revenue growth. For the CTO, it's about how secure is it? How scalable is it? is it integrated into the way I work? What's going to happen if there's a disaster? Will we automatically be able to keep working? So we provide benefits, we provide answers to all of these stakeholders, and which is why we've been successful uh, in um, partnering with some of the largest broadcast news sports organizations in the globe in order to help them benefit from implementing matrix or object storage. Okay, thanks for that, Nick. Uh, let's hand back over to Carsten to tell us a bit more about VPMS EditMate. Yes, um, before I will show you the product um, live in the applications, I just wanted to give you an overview about the functionalities. 
So um, to summarize, EditMate is the editing project management and media management tool um, for Adobe um, Premiere Pro. So integrated natively in, into the application, it helps um, the editors to find their content and quickly and um, yeah, reduce the amount of errors and make, make their work more efficient. Um, the remote editing functionalities um, with our own streaming um, technologies integrated directly into um, Adobe Premiere enable work from anywhere workflows. Um, the product started as an, an extension for um, Premiere, but just recently we also uh, launched a new uh, web interface that brings in even more level um, all of collaboration, for example, exchanging material between a media manager or producer on the one side and an editor using Premiere Pro um, on the other side. The product itself, of course, works on uh, Windows and Mac and is available as a standalone PAM. So we've invested lots of work in the deployment and configuration um, aspects of the product so that now um, we, our partner, can easily roll out the entire product with its own, with its complete MAM, uh, PAM functionality within one or two days. On the next slide, um, you see some of the standard features in a bit more details. So, like I said, project management is a big part of the functionality um, of EditMate. And with that, especially when it comes to project creation, EditMate offers um, lots of help for the editors when they can select centrally managed um, templates. So what's happening when they select such a template? Um, all the technical parameters are set, for example, the frame rate um, of, the, of the sequence that, that they should work on. Everything um, like this is automatically configured when they select one of these templates. And at the same time, also content that is regularly lose, used for certain news show or for certain uh, video that has to be done for a certain customer, all the content then is directly imported um, into the project. These projects then can be shared with other editors because they are centrally stored um, in the database, but they can also be reviewed by producers or media managers um, in the web interface. Next slide. Um, when it comes to media management, everything starts with how is material coming into the system? How is it ingested? And for this, EditMate is offering two ways to get material into the system, starting with the media manager, for example, who has the task to bring in um, an entire drive or certain folder of the drive into the system. He can use um, the web interface, select a folder and upload the material, including um, predefined metadata or customer specific metadata can ingest this into the system. On the left side, you see a screenshot um, of the Premiere Pro panel where an editor is able to use with local material. So like videos that he has stored on his local drive, he can use um, these videos in his project and EditMate then recognizes that there is some unmanaged media used in the project and he can use the panel to also ingest and enter metadata directly within Adobe Premiere to share these videos then with the other editors. Next slide. Um, yeah, when it comes to searching and browsing, um, especially the web interface offers some powerful search um, tools. I'll show you this later in the demo. You can search and browse um, video, but also other formats like audio images or even documents um, in the web interface. When the producers or media managers have found their material, they can pre-select them into um, collections and share these collections then um, with the editors. And the editors, they have also the integrated panel into Adobe Premiere to search either for individual single media or these shared collections and can import this material then directly into their editing projects. On the next slide, um, you see some more media management functionalities that EditMate is offering when it comes to triggering transfers. So easy transfers from one storage location to the other can be triggered by the in the web interface. And for the editors, when they have finished their work on the sequence and they want to create a new asset, they want to publish um, the sequence, they can also do this um, via the EditMate panel. And the nice thing here is that they can select um, um, one centrally managed um, preset that also then ensures um, the right technical parameters. So right format, resolution, um, 
and frame rate everything is then included into this export preset and the editor itself he does not need to take care about all these um, technical parameters next slide please yeah um, like I said, EditMate um, is very strong in offering workflows um, to make sure people can work from anywhere. So everything um, around remote editing and especially with that, we have um, gained lots of experience um, with our own proxy streaming technology. This technology has been matured over the last um, years in the enterprise context. Lots of our customers that I've mentioned before um, are using this in their daily work. Um, so this is a very matured and stabilized um, technology. As you can see on the um, architectural diagram, there is um, our streaming server sitting near the low res storage and providing a stream for um, the remote editor using uh, Premiere. So on the one side, we, have, we are using our own streaming technology, but on the other side, we have our own module sitting on the client itself to enable Premiere Pro to work um, with this client. So as we are working on the proxy, the bandwidth um, can be reduced so that even um, editors can work remotely from home, for example. And when it comes back to, um, to rendering or to publishing new videos, everything, all the high-risk material stays at the main site. Um, so as you can see on the diagram, there is an AME uh, running next to the clips on the high-risk storage. And this AME then is remotely controlled by EditMate and renders out a new asset so that there, there's no need to copy any files um, to the client or back. So on the next slide um, you see another powerful feature that comes with the product um, EditMate which is um, the VDSpine API. So as you may know that um, we have acquired VDSpine um, some, some time ago and as now our products are getting uh, more and more together um, we can offer a subset um, of the VDSpine API as part of the product. As I said before, all our products are based on API technology, and especially here with EditMate, with the included subset of the VDSpine API, um, partners um, or even customers can use this API to extend um, their system, for example, to check in uh, media coming from the outside with metadata, or to um, add media to an existing collections. All these operations um, come with a standard feature set of the product. Yes, I think that's the high level overview about the product. And now we would like to show you more details about the combined workflow. Thanks, Carsten. Um, so yeah, for those of you who've uh, spotted the handout or have read our uh, solution sheet already, you'll recognize this diagram from there. Um, but just to talk through it a little bit, you've got the, the matrix store object storage um, on site there with various vaults in it containing proxies and archive, the full archive, a separate graphics vault. Um, there's no limit to those. We can have as many as we like. Um, and all of our applications are cross usable. So if you uh, put them in with any one of our products. You can also see them with any one of the others. Um, and that's also true of um, when you bring it in with EditMate. Um, that can access via Samba or S3. Um, and in particular, the EditMate streaming servers uh, allow that direct access to the um, matrix store vaults, um, which then in turn allows editing from the remote teams and the on-premise editorial teams. Yes, so the combined solution is um, yeah is is, uh, is very powerful and the most exciting thing is for the customers the ability yeah to manage and edit archive content from anywhere via our proxy streaming technology um, in Adobe Premiere. Um, so with this, um, Premiere Pro editors can use um, low bandwidth connections or even the internet to edit their projects remotely. Um, with access to the proxy um, media via the VPMS streaming server. Um, it's great for editing um, on the move. Like I said before, simply trigger the render remotely and then um, on the location where the high-res is stored, um, a new video is created. The outcome for the user is the ability to create an entire sequence um, based on proxy. He can also, if he has um, high-res access at the same time, he can also um, switch back and forth between proxy and high res to make sure that the result um, of the remote rendering is then um, broadcast quality ready. 
Great. So what I'll do now is hand over to uh, Karsten to show you how this actually works. If I just quickly make you the presenter. Um, there we go. Okay, yeah, thanks. So what I show you here is um, the web interface. And um, like I said, it offers a very nice and intuitive way um, to find your assets. So I have a free text field where I can enter um, my, my field, my, my text um, search, and then I get a result of um, items um, back. What I could do here now, I could then um, filter um, further. Either I want to just see projects um, or collections. I can um, select a different location. If I have a multi-site um, architecture, I would be able to only see um, files um, or assets from a certain location. Um, and I have other um, low um, filters um, here. The nice thing, I can also switch um, between a different um, view. Um, so for example, if I would then um, have this proxy or this, this thumbnail view, I would also be able to, um, to get a preview um, of the images um, to um, yeah, fastly recognize if that's the right content I'm looking for. Um, I can also combine certain um, search operators um, with an AND or even an OR um, connection, so I can build up um, quite complex um, search formulas to find my content, and then I'd see um, the results in here. If I would double click um, on the on the item, I would get um, a more detailed um, view. I would get a preview um, image. I see all the shapes that are related. So in th this case here, we have an original um, file, an original shape, and a proxy shape. I see all the metadata, and I can also add some comments um, here based. Um, on the timeline. So for example, I'm doing some, some easy review and approval workflows. I can also add some comments here on the timeline. Here in that example, um, some adjustments on the color grading needs to be done and then hand this then over back um, to the editors. So this is a way how the editor or the, the sorry, the media manager or producer can easily find um, the content. And he can also simply add this content um, to one of the collections that are centrally um, managed. So if I would have already a collection in the system, I can easily add this content to the collection. And also this collection then um, can be handed over to the editor. There are lots of more functionalities um, in the web interface, but I would like to keep the workflow simple. So then I would hand over to um, the um, editor using Adobe Premiere. So what the editor usually would do um, when, when starting his work, he would create a new project, um, give in some, some metadata, and select one of the templates that I have described um, before. So more metadata um, can be entered, for example, also a certain um, editing state to make sure that the editing pro, um, project uh, runs through the entire um, process, and then he can easily um, create the project and all the information um, will be available. This now takes um, some seconds because I'm working on, on a cloud uh, demo instance. Of course, when it's working on-prem, this would be much faster. What you can see now is that there is already an HD Cam XD, uh, an HD sequence um, generated, so the editor knows already um, which, which format, which uh, technical parameters um, he should use in his project. And there is um, a series of certain yeah, content um, assets already uh, imported. So for example, um, some intro slides that he knows that he will be using, um, some audio files, key visuals, um, and so on. So this is then basically the starting point um, for the editor where he does not need to search for all the, the assets to get started, he already has everything um, that he needs. He can then also search for more content, um, for example, also for um, an edit made a video or a collection, he can filter um, here very easily between the different um, asset types. And by just double clicking, he can import um, the video into the project. Um, what I'm doing right here, I'm working remotely um, because like I said, this is um, a cloud um, instance. I don't have physical um, access um, to the file, but I'm working um, with the stream. Um, you also see here now in the preview, 
um, all these um, comments that I've um, inserted before in the web interface can uh, are also handed over then um, to Premiere and the editor can now um, simply pr preview um, the file. Um, like I said, we have invested lots in the performance of our streaming technology. So even though I'm working here on a cloud instance, um, the entire scrubbing performance is, is very fluent and the editor does not really recognize a difference, either these working on proxy um, or high res besides um, the resolution, of course. So he can just um, select his parts he wants to work um, in the sequence or um, select the entire video into the sequence. And if he then would be um, finished with this workflow, he can um, switch back to the edit mate panel and trigger a publish um, from here, select um, one of the export presets that I managed by EditMate, and so remotely send this information um, to the AME that is working in the main site. And from that on, the um, new asset will be triggered. Uh, one thing I forgot um, that will show you Mark in a bit more technical details later, I've said that I'm working um, on the proxy file, which you can also see in the properties of um, the, the file that I've have, that have in, imported into the project. Usually when there would be a physical high-risk file link, you would see the physical file um, of the, the file in the, in the path information. But as you can see here, it's referring to an S4M file. And this is the file that we are using to enable um, Premiere Pro to see or to, be, to, to work um, with the stream coming, coming from us. Um, how this looks like in a bit more in a bit in a bit more technical perspective, and this will show you Mark now next. Uh, thanks, Carsten. Let me just uh, hand over the screen to myself. Uh, share my screen. Um, and yeah, just looking at uh, what's actually under the hood. Obviously, we've got a, a matrix store under the hood that's uh, built up of multiple nodes um, and has the usual things you'd expect in there audits, uh, all the tasks that are running in the background, the protection, the checksums, etc. Uh, full AD integration and user management side of things as well. Uh, but the core part of the matrix store is all around the, the vaults, the way we divide up our system into, uh, for want of a better word, a bucket or a workspace. You can give it any name, you can set protection screen schemes, you can set up uh, the integrity level, whether we're doing an MD5 or an Adler 32. Um, we've got built-in compliance as well, the ability to really lock down that data and make sure it's immutable for a certain amount of time, as well as built-in trash cans. So whichever one of our applications or APIs is used to delete the asset, you know it's going to safely go into a trash can uh, for the amount of time that you require it for. We've got the built-in process in place as well, and this is where we just switch it on. Um, and that's the, the ability to extract all that metadata that Nick was mentioning earlier. And then we've also got the built-in replications. That's vault by vault. You can replicate to another cluster or to matrix store as a service um, to keep all those assets in the right place um, at the right time. We've got a full suite of analytics tools as well, uh, which we call Sense, uh, and that's just outputting into some off the shelf um, analytics uh, tools, but we can go into the depth of uh, seeing what's happening at a vault level or an application level, um, as well as the overall cluster level as well. Just see what's hitting the service um, at any one time out there. Um, one of the core parts of that um, application is what we call Vision. Uh, Vision is a, a view into your matrix store to see your assets and see the, the assets that you're actually be working on. Uh, that includes a, a completely customizable interface uh, browser. It can look like your company, your logos, your color schemes. And we've got a full search system in place, um, as well as the ability to, to preview our assets, um, as well as grab all that additional metadata and search on all that metadata as well uh, that we've extracted throughout the system. Certainly very useful in the disaster recovery uh, where you need to keep that business continuity up. Uh, on the left here, we've got the various faults that we've got access to, uh, but in particular, these assets are here uh, within the matrix store. Now, Carsten mentioned earlier, when we set up our project files, um, the actual assets themselves are on the matrix store and we can see them directly with vision. Uh, but we also have the project files uh, which are brought in uh, those little s4ms so they're not taking up any space on the actual local machine uh, we've just got the ability to see uh, where it is it's uh, in particular this case at the end of a unc path 
uh, on the local network uh, and that includes the low res high res that we can demonstrate there as well uh, so exactly as Carsten was saying we can just nip into our, our Premiere Pro we can browse to our project files uh, we can see them uh, chuck them on the timeline play them up uh, through our streaming server and again we've got a straightforward scrubbing uh, and use of the uh, directly with the uh, um, streaming service uh, and getting our editors working uh, remotely and out in the wilds. I think that's uh, pretty much everything uh, from my side of things now. Um, so let's just quickly nip back to the uh, Q&A section. And uh, I've got a few questions to start us off, uh, but please do chuck any questions you have into the chat window. Um, so first question to you, Nick, how long have Object Matrix and Avato systems worked together? <clears throat> well, I think we've known the um, Avato guys from the S4M days. Um, we've certainly worked with Vidispine for about 10 years, um, and certainly the relationship with Avato Systems, uh, uh, I think, is about three or four years now. Great stuff. Have we got any joint deployments of the solution at the moment? Um, we certainly do, but unfortunately, where we are unable to give any details right now, but hopefully sometime in the future we will. Great stuff. And lastly, just uh, how do we pass that metadata between the EPMS Edit Mate and the Matrix Store? Well, I'm a sales guy, so I have no idea. Maybe you want to help the, <laughs> the audience with that question. Um, so yeah, that metadata we entered at the VPMS Edit Mate side of things. Um, when it goes through uh, through the Premiere Pro, actually goes in as XMP metadata. So luckily, the Matrix Store, as I mentioned earlier, process in place is extracting that metadata. Uh, and also making it available to us in the Matrix Store as well. Um, so we've got a, a full run-up of all the metadata crossing between the two systems. Are there any other questions out there from anybody? So if you have any questions, just use the um, the um, question uh, little window. I think we may have one. Ooh. If for some reason an editor wanted to use a high-res file, is there an option to give them access to that asset easily? Yes, I can. Um, I can answer this. Um, so, assuming that the um, the editor, I mean, has physically access um, to the high res, um, he could use um, a Premiere toggle um, functionality um, to switch between the high res um, and the proxy. So, um, if the um, access would be would be there, then by importing um, the file, um, also the high res file um, would be linked. And um, like I said, the editor could easily use this Premiere toggle uh, functionality to switch between um, proxy and Hyrus. I hope this answers the question. Transcoding from Premiere Pro takes place on OM or on separate Vidaspine nodes? Um, so the um, yeah the the, the publishing um, on from from Premiere this is done by the by the AME and this can be um, this could, the AME itself can run either locally on the client that the the editor is working on or centrally um, um, in the main site um, and then if it's working in the main site um, we would just hand over um, yeah basically all the sequence um, information to the AME and then the rendering then is done on a server that is um, located um, near the high res um, in the main site. Um, when it comes to transfers or additional um, transcodings um, that I've um, showed in the in the slides, this is then done by the, the VDSpine server agent, the VSA, um, which is then also running um, on, on some of the servers. I hope this answers the question. Um, if, if it doesn't answer the question, then obviously we're all free um, to take questions, um, certainly from our side, you have the, the contact details on the slide. Um, if you put Nick in front of the object matrix domain, you will get in touch with myself as well. If you have any questions from a sales point of view, um, and I guess if there are no more questions, I'll just hand over to Mark. Yeah, I'd just like to say thank you everyone for joining us on the webinar. Thank you to Carsten for um, talking us through the edit mate side of things, and uh, for Nick for giving us the overview as well. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining. Okay, also thank you from my side.
Also, just one last point, the, um, there will be a video available um, to take from this. So for any colleagues who may have missed it, we will be sending out a link with a video. Great. Thanks very much, everyone. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.